motorcycle racing fans, it's time for the next Moto Champion Talk Show, brought to you by Yoshimura. back he made history by taking the win in flat track at x games last year and was the second overall in gnc1 in 2015. he's michigan born michigan raised and proud of it it's the number 42 brian smith welcome to the show hi thanks for having me absolutely so obviously we're going to talk about the 2016 season but first we want to talk about what you've been doing in your off season get us up to speed Oh, just training and getting ready for the season. It was a really short off season uh, with the last race in Vegas being, what, mid-November. So before we knew it, it was the new year and uh, it was time to get ready. Um, I was fortunate enough to celebrate New Year's with uh, my good buddy Kid Rock and stay up all night and uh, do things that I can't talk about. <laughs> just kidding. No, but it was a good time ringing the new year. Then it was time to get to work. And uh, we've been down here in Daytona for a week now practicing and uh, ready to go ready to go so let's let's get caught up 2015 uh was up and down for you you had a couple of misses but a couple of big wins as well so wrap it up for for the fans yeah it struggled really bad last year in daytona um it's a tough track for everybody and uh i had a really really bad uh, go last year so i was playing catch up all year but started winning right off the bat and got back in the points race uh won five nationals which is over double everybody else um so it was good it's a great season but at the end of the year we come up uh short in the points and ended up second again so it uh i wasn't happy with it even five wins x games gold it sucks when you're still like bummed about not winning so i gotta win more this year got to win and it was your five wins i think to jared Mees's one win uh at the end of the season so let's talk about that um the end of the season kind of came to a head at vegas uh the final round of the year like you mentioned talk about that face off that final face off with jared and how that's gonna um roll over into the 2016 season yeah there's a little bit of drama there short tracks aren't my specialty even though i've won a short track and he never has so it was like kind of weird situation, indoor, little small track, smallest track there's ever been a Grand National flat track on in history. So it was just a mess, really. Um, I wasn't happy with uh, the AMA for promoting that, but whatever. Um, you know, he, he got the better of me there this year. The, the final race is a mile, so I think the ball's in my court this year. Um, you know, everything come to a head in Vegas, um, you know, and racing's racing. He, he beat me straight up. Um, there was drama behind all that, but we're gonna we're gonna make it happen this year with uh, the mile being the final race. I think it's gonna be be really good for me and my team. In this week's product spotlight, we're bringing you this Speedway Shelter. I actually found the Speedway Shelter in Baltimore, Maryland after a huge snowstorm. I was at a friend's house. He said, hey, I wanna show you my bike. He took me outside under this huge pile of snow. Uh, he had his motorcycle parked in a Speedway Shelter. And to be honest, I had never seen one before. And so he pulls the shelter back and he shows me the bike and I was like, man, that's an awesome motorcycle, but that's also a great shelter. Where did you get it? And that's how we found the Speedway Shelter. So what you have right here is what we've taken out of the box. We ordered one, uh, we brought it here. We wanna see how long it takes us to put it together uh, and exactly how easy it is to open and close the thing. So when you look at what came in the box, you know, we start at the top with uh, the heavy duty cover that it comes with. There's a base plate. There's three of these rounded bars and they also include this easy to use instruction booklet, which will probably save you some time. And then there's uh, these three squared bars. We've got two folding compartments, two connecting rods, a light. They also include a bag of anchor bolts for cement or asphalt. If you're gonna use a wooden plank, then you can just go with nuts and bolts, but you're gonna wanna secure this to the ground. All of this fits into this travel bag in case you wanna take it somewhere with you. So underneath this, what you see right here is the uh, Diamond Sport mat. This one runs about 100 bucks and it's gonna keep a lot of dirt and, and dust off your bike as you roll it in and out of the Speedway Shelter. So we're gonna put this thing together, we're gonna see exactly how long it's gonna take, and then we'll be back to show you how easy it is to pull a bike in and out of it.
All right, let's see what we got. 11 minutes, not bad for something uh, uh, this size and, and for a shelter piece like this. And the reason that you saw me in there for a while is because there's Velcro straps that attach to each and every bar good lengthy uh, amounts of, of Velcro uh, that are gonna really hold this thing down and keep it protected from the wind. One of the things I noticed while I was putting it together too is this underside is waterproof, uh, extremely thick and very durable. And we've got a couple windows on the sides. A couple things to point out. You don't have to worry about your bike or pipe being hot when you cover it because the Speedway Shelter doesn't come into contact with your motorcycle. There are extra tie down latches at the roof for more support in case you run into high winds or bad weather. And as I mentioned earlier, windows for ventilation. You can even put a lock on it to make it more secure. I can't stress enough how easy this thing was, not only to put together, but once it's together to roll your bike in and out of it. No tools were required to put this thing together. So um, a lot of people, not only using it outside, they're using it inside the garage so that when you clean your bike and you go to put it away, it's gonna stay clean. You're gonna keep the dust off it. These are gonna range between 325 and 425. This is the original Speedway Shelter. If you want the mat, it's gonna run an extra 100 bucks, but you can get these at speedwayshelters.com and that's this week's Product Spotlight. Great rates for great rides. Geico Motorcycle. See how much you could save. And we're back. He took third place at Super Prestigio Barcelona just after winning the inaugural Super Prestigio of the Americas. And he took the 2015 Grand National Championship. He's the number one, Jared Mees. Jared, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks a lot for having me back. Absolutely. We had you just at the end of 2015, but it's always good to see you. You're down in sunny Daytona right now, and after a really strong weekend in Volusia, you said bring on 2016. You sound ready. Yeah, of course. You know, I uh, being almost 30 years old, I've, I've been at it for quite a while now and just kind of know how to prepare myself mentally and physically. And, uh, you know, we've had a good start to the season. Of course, the, the half miles are nothing like the opening rounds of Daytona 1 and 2, but... Um, you know, the competition's, of course, as strong as ever. And uh, to come down here and have, you know, some success early is, you know, good for the confidence. And we've learned some stuff. We're trying some different things. And, um, you know, hopefully we could pick up uh, where we left off from last year. So uh, that's, that's, that, that'd be the great goal. Right. And obviously the target's on your back this year. You had a really strong season uh, in 2015, ended up taking the championship, but it wasn't necessarily easy for that matter. So, um, you know, what do you say to the fact that you're probably the one with the target on your back this year? Oh, definitely. You know, it's it's never winning the champ. It's never easy winning a championship, especially with the talent pool that we have in the AMA flat track. So and to do it uh, back to back was obviously one of my biggest goals. So to uh you know, to try to, to go after three, I know it's going to be as tough as ever, but um, I mean, as far as, you know, preparation and, and equipment and team, you know, is all the same as what it was uh, the last couple of years. So, um, you know, I know the, a couple of the racetracks that are coming up are uh, going to suit a couple other riders style versus mine. But, um, you know, we uh, we've always seemed to pull it, uh, pull it out of our uh, <laughs> pull the rabbit out of the hat when we needed to. So looking forward to it. It's going to be a fun season. And um you know, there's a couple races definitely that I really want to win this year and uh, and get and get past it. So uh, excited for it, honestly. Well, and short tracks aren't necessarily your thing, are they? Well, I mean, I've had some success at Daytona. I've never had a win, but I've had some really, really close uh, second places and, and uh, I've been on the podium. You know, Daytona's. 
Daytona's pretty hit or miss for everybody. You know, I, I, people's come down here and, and won both days, and then the next year's come down here and barely break the top ten. So uh, you never know what to expect with Daytona. You know, a start's a big thing. Qualifying's a big thing. Um, you know, it's you, you just never know who the big players are. I mean, there's definitely guys that go good, but uh, I, I feel our chances are as good to win as, as anybody. So uh, I, I'm pretty excited. I'd love to win Daytona. It's not necessarily the uh, the ultimate goal, you know, to come out of here with some really good valuable points is the ultimate goal and stay clean but and healthy. But uh, I would really like to win it. This is supposedly the last year for uh, racing the singles everywhere. So, and I never had a singles win. Let I'm sure I get a um, singles win this year. Well, obviously, uh, taking a win the first round would be a good way to start the season. Um, Jared, let's just talk about um, kind of the monkey or the elephant in the room, rather. The, it came to a head last year with you and Brian just right there at the end of the season. Everything came down to the line. You ended up taking the win in the championship ultimately. But what's the feeling this year? I mean, you know he's gunning for you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like, uh, of course, Brian's going to be tough, but um, – there's a lot of other guys that are going to be really tough. You know, I feel like Brad Baker is going to be really strong. Uh, you know, Kenny Colbeth, although he's, he's getting a little up there in age, I feel like he's still as strong as, uh, as ever. You know, there's going to be some racetracks where I feel he's going to struggle at. Uh, but we're all going to have our struggles, I feel, I feel like. You know, we're all going to have bad days in racing. You're never going to have a, a perfect a perfect season. Um, you know, Brandon Robinson's on, our, on a really good team this well, and he's shown some strength early on there at Savannah. So, you know, I really feel like uh, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be an interesting year. There's a lot of good guys with a lot of teams. Um, of course, with the miles that keep getting added to the schedule, of course, Brian's going to be um, is going to be as tough as ever because of you know his strength on the miles for sure. But um, you know, it's the AMA Grand National. You gotta you gotta put a whole season together from start to finish. So yes, obviously, start to finish, you want to have a very consistent year. You. Only won one race last year, but ended up taking the whole championship. So it's obviously about consistency. So let's talk about the off season, what you've been up to. How are you prepping for this season? What have you been doing? Well, you know, the, the AMA Grand National Series got uh, over very late last year, you know, late uh, late November, a week before, you know, four or five days before Thanksgiving. So, you know, I got home and enjoyed Thanksgiving and then was on a really quick to Barcelona, Spain for the Super Prestigio out there. And then when we came back home, I had about, uh, I think I had Christmas and then another week off, and I was out there in Australia. And then I got back from Australia, and I ended up going to California a couple of weeks after that to do some testing for the, for the you know, the opening rounds here at Daytona with uh, Moto Station and Jimmy Wood. So uh, i just been really on the go since November, you know, since we left out to Las Vegas. I left a couple of weeks early prior to Las Vegas last year, like around November 1st, to go out there and do some testing. So... Really just been on the go, been on the gun. Um, you know, of course, I, I never really stopped training or working out or, you know, anything like that. I'm really, really into being fit and enjoy riding a bicycle and uh, and riding motocross, whatever, rowing, whatever, whatever it takes. And uh, so I never really stopped. But um, it's been a really busy off season. Uh, it's been a fun off season, but really, really busy. So, you know, looking forward to uh, just kind of picking up where I left off, really. You know, I never really got to – to let it settle in or set in. It's just been kind of on the pin. So um, hopefully we'll be doing some rolling. In this week's product spotlight, we're taking another look at the JRI shock. Now, last time it was the 35 Pro Single, which is made for smaller displacement motorcycles. This week, we're looking at a pair of Harley Single adjustable shocks. These shocks are made to order with each set being designed specifically for the rider. From the correct application for your specific model to the right length and spring combination, JRI wants to ensure that you enjoy a better ride every time. Here's where this adjustable shock stands out from the others. No tools needed adjustments and JRI gives you 60 clicks of adjustment to work with. This allows you to easily change to each adventure. Whether you have a passenger, no passenger, or a ton of cargo, these shocks will easily adjust to your needs. This custom piston is designed for high frequency and load amplitude grip. It's rebuildable and serviceable with several spring rates to meet every rider's profile and payload. There's enhanced dampening control and a sleek anodized billet top caps and black performance enhancing springs. 
Compared to the stock shocks, you're gonna improve your ride quality and handling as these shocks are more responsive and reactive to the road's imperfections. There's a minimum installation effort and they mount directly with the existing hardware. The JRI Harley Single Adjustable Shock will work on the following models. Dyna, Sportster, CVO, V-Rod, and Touring models. Now a pair of these JRI Harley Single Adjustable Shocks are gonna come in under that $900 mark. And some Harley owners have said it's the best aftermarket part they've purchased for their motorcycle. So as I mentioned earlier, these are custom built. So your next step, if you're interested, it would be to go to jrishocks.com, email or call one of their service technician specialists. Uh, this is the Harley Single Adjustable Shock from JRI, and that's this week's Product Spotlight. That's a Bridgestone Ecopia. I've never seen them out in the wild like this. It's young, too. They're very young. We're here studying the behavior of Bridgestone's fuel-efficient Ecopia tires in their natural setting. They can help you save up to $450 in gas over their lifetime. What? Holy smokes, that's a great deal. <sighs> great. You scared it away. Oh. Start going green and saving some green. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. back. He came out of retirement and had a near perfect weekend that he topped off by making history as the oldest winner in the event's history. He's your 2016 Daytona 200 champ. He's Michael Barnes. Michael, welcome to the show. Thanks, Danielle. How are you doing today? We're good and we're so happy to have you. We're so happy for your win and congratulations are definitely in order, Michael. Uh, you had an incredible weekend from first practice all the way to the finish line. Talk about this comeback weekend for you. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a pretty uh, incredible weekend. Uh, actually, the whole couple weeks leading up to the, to the Daytona trip has just been unbelievable. Last-minute effort that we just threw together with Sean Prieto uh, and a few of my buddies and some uh, good, loyal sponsors of mine. Right, so let's talk about some of those sponsors that came on board at the last second. Um, they're very important to the effort this weekend that ultimately ended up with the win. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Palm Beach Police Foundation came on to help my Pareto performance and Pareto Racing R6, and um, they came through with some last-minute funding just to help help with some of the expenses incurred at Daytona. And and uh, I'm just pleased to have them on as a sponsor, and hope you know hope to have future relations with them as well. Well, Barney, you said this was an emotional win to say the least, and that you won this one for quite a few people. Elaborate on that. Um, yeah, well. <laughs> There's been a lot of stuff that's happening in our community over the past few years, and it's uh, not to mention in, in in my life. You know, I it goes back to 2013 when I lost lost my mother just over three years ago. Um, you know, there's just been some tough times in my life, and I lost a whole bunch of racers, and you know, most most notably and most recently, you know, people like Mike Corbino, Dane Westby, Tommy Aquino, and, um, and Santiago Villa. You know, the, it's it's some kind of heavy times for us in in, uh, in our racing community, and especially you know, just close to myself. You know, a good friend of mine up in Canada was killed in a racing accident. J. R. McRae, and um, just all uh, these, they're just happening a lot. And it's not necessarily from a racing accident, um, even though some are. You know, some of them are just some, you know, freak freak accidents and uh, untimely deaths. So these these uh, this race is really goes out to all of them. Uh, my mother, especially my my number one biggest supporter and fan, and uh, you know I was carrying also, you know, and and you know trying to be on a real positive note and, and kind of change this a little bit. But a lot of prayers and energy uh, is being sent to a good friend of mine, Jim Sahorik, and and he's going through some uh, some battles with cancer. And uh, he's got so much faith that I really have a feeling that he's going to beat this thing. 
um, very strong man, and uh, he rode with me on the front fairing of the of the two hundred. And he's he's him and all of his, all of his angels and all the people that were behind me and uh, support me. That's what made this happen. And like you were just um, saying, that you're wearing your Danny as like number 69 shirt in support of your friend Danny. So let's just touch on it real quick. You're a veteran of the sport, experienced to say the least. What's your take and perspective on the whole thing at the end of the weekend? Well, at the end of the weekend, you know, he should have been in the race as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's uh, something that happened off the racetrack. I wish they could have stayed off the race. And, um, and and been dealt with when it's supposed to be being dealt with, which is afterwards. And, um, you know, this country's founded on, on certain principles, one of which is, you know, and it's still from guilty. And, um, you know, I just want that process to go through and Danny to come in and, and, and give his take on the whole deal. But in the meantime, um, I'm honored to have replaced him at the top of the podium this weekend because he's the one that – should have been there for the three peat, um, but you know, the part of me won this race for him and his three peat. He's a good friend, and uh, I'm proud of him either way. We look forward to a great season with you, and for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion. Done. Let's take a quick commercial break and thank some sponsors. <laughs> Take 20. I see the huge difference. Shoes. No shoes, shoes, no shoes, shoes. <laughs>